hello guys welcome back to my channel welcome to one's wonder now in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to cut a men's corporate trouser and i'm going to be using one of the simplest method i've learned over the years now what i'm going to be needing to cut a trouser is my curve driller my straight driller my scissors my chalk and of course my tip so if you've been having problems cutting a men's corporate trouser welcome to my channel subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you don't get to miss any video my name is kosi kosi Mwa. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is to rule out the sideline of my trouser like so. I'm ruling it out because I do not want um, the company's logo to keep showing on my trouser. If I was using an Ankara, I would also rule out this sideline because I do not want the printing at the edge of the fabric to be visible when I'm done sewing the trouser. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to rule out the waistline of my trouser at the edge like so. When I am done ruling out my waistline, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to rule out all the horizontal measurements of this trouser and that includes the crotch line, the knee line, the full length and of course I'm going to be adding one and a half inches allowance at the bottom of the trouser. To do that I'm going to be taking out one inch from the length of my trouser. That is my tape is going to be starting from two you can see where my hand is and you can see how my tape is overlapping by one inch at the waistline of the trouser now this is because that one inch is going to be replaced by the waistband of my trouser i'm taking out that one inch because i'm going to be replacing it by the waistband of the trouser the waistband of the trouser is mostly one inch and quarter 1.3 inches right so i'm going to be taking out one inch and the reason you take out one inch is because for a trouser you do not you do not need too much and you do not need too little you need the exact measurement if it is going to be fitting correctly after taking out that one inch i'm going to be marking my chalk at my crotch line now the crotch line of this trouser is 10 and i'm going to be marking my chalk at 10 inches and i'm going to go down and mark my chalk at the full length of the trouser which is 40 inches and then i'm going to be adding one and a half inches allowance which is going to give me 41 point and a half inches after doing that, I'm going to take my tip down to the crotch line of my trouser and place it at the full length of my trouser. Like I am going to take it down to the crotch line and place it at the full length. After that, I'm going to fold it into two at the full length of my trouser. I'm going to divide the tip by two at the full length. I'm not going to touch the one and a half inches I added for the sewing allowance, right? After that, I'm going to mark my chalk at that breaking point of my tip and then I'm going to come up by two inches. Now, the two inches i just came up by is the knee length of my trouser the two inches i came up by is the knee length and i'm doing this because it could be tricky when you want to take the knee length measurement in a trouser so that two inches i came up by is the knee length as you can see i cancelled out um the other chalk so let me do it again i folded my tape by two like so and then i marked my chalk at that point and then I came up by two inches, as you can see. After coming up by two inches, I took my time to cancel out the other um, measurements. So this is my crotch line. This is my full length. This um, is the knee length of my trouser. <clears throat> and of course, this is the two inches, one and a half inches allowance I added rather for the sewing. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to rule out all these lines across with my ruler like so. After marking it on the crotch line, the next thing I'm going to do is to rule the line on the knee length of the trouser like I told you. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is to rule a line on the full length of my trouser. I'm also going to be ruling a line on the one and a half inches hemming allowance like so. So this is the waistline of my trouser, this is the crotch line of my trouser, this is the knee length, this is the full length and then this is the one and a half inches allowance I added for the hemming. 
the next thing i'm going to be doing is to place my tie measurements now as you can see the tie of this trouser is 24 inches i'm going to be dividing my tie by 2 so 24 divided by 2 is going to give me 12 inches i'm going to place that 12 inches on my crotch line i'm going to place that 12 inches on my crotch line so 24 divided by 2 is 12 i'm going to be i'm placing that 12 inches on my crotch line after that i'm going to be further dividing 12 by 2 so the simplest way to do this is to break my tape into two 12 divided by 2 is going to give me 6 and after breaking my tape into 2 it gave me 6 inches as you can see so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to place this measurement across all lines so i'm going to place 6 inches here and then i'm going to go to my knee line and place six inches i'm now going to go down on my calf and place six inches allowance i'm now going to go down again on my full length and place six inches and of course i'm going to be placing the same six inches on the one and a half inches i left for the seam allowance after that i'm going to be ruling a line across the six inches like so The next thing I'm going to be doing is to be placing the measurements for the inseam of the trouser. Now the inseam is always divided by 4. The inseam of this trouser is 13. 13 divided by 4 is going to give me 3.3 inches. So I'm going to be placing 3.3 inches on either side of this center line. I'm also going to be dividing the knee by 4. But before that, let us divide for the inseam. Now, as you can see on the tape, this right here is 3.3 inches, right? Now, I'm going to be placing 3.3 inches on this side of the line. Then I'm going to go behind and place 3.3 inches. I'm also going to be doing the same thing for the one and a half inches allowance I added for the seaming. So I'm going to place 3.3 inches here and I'm going to go behind and place 3.3 inches here now after doing that i'm going to go up to the knee now the knee is always divided by four just like the inseam the knee of this trouser is 17 17 divided by four is going to give me 4.3 inches so i'm going to be placing 4.3 inches on each side of this line so i'm going to place 4.3 inches here and i'm also going to place 4.3 inches here so the next thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using my curve driller to match these lines across right i'm going to use my curve driller to trace these lines across like so and that is where this ruler comes in handy in my previous videos i used a pattern master to mark a trouser but for this video i'm going to be using this curve driller and um I recommend it if it's something um, that you want you could hit me up with the link in the description box of this video and I'm going to get it across to you now you need a ruler like this especially when marking a trouser a suit or a waist coat because you want just the right amount of hips you do not want it to be saggy you don't want it to sag you don't want it to be shaggy you don't want it to be folded at some point you want um your trouser to be aligning correctly especially if you're making a corporate trouser like i am doing now so you need this ruler if it's something you want you could hit me up in my whatsapp and i'm going to send it across to you after matching the line from the knee length to my full length i'm going to do the same thing that i just did i'm going to match the line from my tie to my knee length i'm going to use this ruler to match the tie from my to match the line rather from my tie to my knee length also one thing about this ruler is that the fact that it is wooden it is a wooden ruler so it is very very durable it is not something that's going to melt quickly when an iron is placed on top right so like i said hit me up in my whatsapp and i'm going to send it across to you When I'm done merging it for the front, I'm going to do the same thing for the back of the truss. I'm going to merge it like so, like I am doing now. So after merging it like so, the next thing I'm going to do is to calculate the waist of the trouser. After calculating the waist of the trouser, I am done with the front cutting of the trouser. So first of all, at the waistline of the trouser, I am going to go in by half inch at that point. I am going to go in by half inch from that line. So I'm going to mark my chalk at half inch. After marking my chalk at half inch, the next thing I'm going to do is to use my ruler and merge it to 
the other lines now this is where this ruler i told you this ruler is very important when cutting the trouser this ruler is very important it makes your work easier it makes it look neater it makes it more professional i can promise you that so what i'm simply doing is to merge it from that half inch that i went in by to the rest of the trouser now you can see how the hips is coming out you can see how well aligned the hips is it is very bad to say trouser for a man and the hips is looking very very big it is very very bad so you might want to use this ruler anyways the next thing i'm going to do is to calculate the waist now the waist of this trouser is 32 and the waist is always divided by 4 so 32 divided by 4 is going to give me 8 i'm going to mark my chalk at 8 and then i'm going to add 1 inch allowance for my sewing that 1 inch allowance i added is for my sewing after that i'm going to use my straight ruler and really line from that point to my waist to my crotch line rather and after reading the line from that point to my crotch line i'm going to still use the curve in my ruler to create that curve at the crotch line after that i'm going to come down by one inch at the front of my waist i'm going to come down by one inch and then i am going to really line from that point to um the sideline of my trouser like so so as you can see, I am done with marking the front of the trouser. That is that about marking um, the front of a trouser. I hope you well understood this part. And um, if you cut this part, it is very, very okay because you do not need to stress much about the back of the trouser. That one is just a walk in the pack. Right now, the next thing I'm going to do is to cut it out. The next thing I'm going to do is to place the front of the trouser upside down like so. I'm going to place it upside down on the remaining of the fabric. If you remember, we cut it um, the other way around, right? Like we cut it like this, right? Now I'm going to turn it like this and this is going to help me to minimize fabric especially um if i don't have enough this is going to help me to minimize by the way i have more than enough but this is going to help me to minimize fabric uh very well after turning it upside down what i'm going to do is to try to arrange it The next thing I'm going to do is to rule a horizontal line on the back. Now I'm going to rule the same lines that I ruled on the front. I'm going to do the same thing for the back. So I'm going to rule a line on the crotch line. And then I'm going to rule a straight line on the knee length. And then I'm going to go down to the full length and rule a straight line. Now, for a matured male, the space between the front and the back on the crotch is always 3 inches. For a matured meal, the space between that place is 3 inches. So I'm going to mark 3 inches at that point. That is starting from, um, from the tie to that point. It's going to be 3. And then down here, I am going to use 2 and quarter, 2.3 inches. I use 3 inches up here. And then down here, I am going to use 2.3 inches. I'm going to use the same 2.3 inches for the full length. So I'm going to place 2.3 inches here and then I'm going to place 2.3 inches here and then I'm going to go down and place 2.3 inches here. Now if it were for a teenager, I'm going to reduce the um, measurement a bit. Maybe on the crotch line I am going to place for a teenager I might place 2 3 quarter inches. Now after placing that measurement i'm going to use my ruler to um make the curve at that point 
understand i am going to use my ruler to make a curve at that point remember this measurement is standard for um a matured meal this measurement i am using is standard and this measurement i use includes all your allowance you do not need to add excess allowance on a trouser it is not going to be good because you will find it hard bringing out the shape of that trouser so this measurement i use is including the allowance in my previous videos i saw someone asking me um, more about the allowance this measurement please it is um all the allowance you are going to need right it is all the allowance when we are sewing this trouser you are going to see what i mean by it is all the allowance um it's still going to have excess inside in case your client grows too big for the trouser or grows too small you could still adjust it so like i said these measurements i used um have all the allowance you are going to need you do not need to start stressing yourself about allowance this allowance that okay after that the next thing i'm going to do is to cut out the front of um the sewing or to cut out the front part of the back of the trouser like so Now this part of the fabric or this part of the trouser is going to be very important to me and when making the front pocket of the trouser this is because I always love using a lining when making the front pocket of a trouser so of course I need the facing and this is going to serve as the facing for the front pocket and that is because I do not like um, using the exact material when making the pocket I love using a lining or a pocket seam that being said if you've not subscribed to this channel then do subscribe to this channel also turn on the bell icon so you get to see when we upload videos like this one and many more subscribe if you do not want to miss amazing tutorials i have tons of them for you this year now for this part we are going to take a close look on how to calculate the hips of a trouser right now the first thing i'm going to do is to divide my crotch by two the crotch is 8 inches presently divided by 2 is going to give me 4 so I'm going to mark my chalk at 4 inch and then I'm going to go behind and still mark my chalk at the center of the crotch after that I'm going to rule a straight line across it like so now I want you to notice that I am calculating the hips at the center of the crotch. I am not taking it down to the crotch to calculate. I am calculating the hips at the center of the crotch and that is because the hips is above the crotch. So I am going to mark half inch into my front um, trouser. I am going to mark half inch in and half inch in at both sides like I just did. The next thing I'm going to do is to mark two and a half inches from the front of my trouser. I'm going to mark two and a half inches from that point to that point. Now after marking my chalk at two and a half inches, I'm going to really line across it like so. Now to calculate the hips, make sure that you have more than enough so i'm going to mark half inch at this point and half inch at this point after that i am going to place my tape in between the half inch on both sides now in between the half inch is giving me nine inches nine inches multiplied by two is giving me 18 inches i'm going to write down that 18 inches on one point now the next thing to do would be to calculate the hips of the back from that half inch at that point that i place my tape i'm going to take it to the two and a half inch line that i just marked and it gave me 12 inches i hope you can see from that half inch to that two and a half inches line gave me 12 inches 12 times 2 is going to give me 24 so i'm going to plot 24 plus the initial 18 is going to give me around 42 so that tells you that i have more than enough the hips of this trouser is 36 like i said right so i have more than enough now when sewing it i am going to be forced to take out that extra allowance let me do it again from this half inch to that two and a half inches line gave me 12 12 times 2 gave me 6 um 24 24 plus the 18 that i took out for the 
front gave me around 42 right now the hips of this trouser is 36 that tells you that i have more than enough and that is what you are supposed to strive for when making the hips you want to have more than enough you don't want to have too small you don't want to have exactly the hips you want to have more than enough after that we are going to go up to the waist for the waist i'm simply going to mark my chalk at one and a half inches 1.3 inches at that point you understand i am simply going to mark my chalk at 1.3 inches and i'm going to use my ruler to really line across it like so the reason i had used 1.3 inches on my waist is because i already calculated my waist and i already um arrived at the allowance when i was cutting the front if you remember that when i divided it by two i added one inches allowance so i do not need too much allowance on my waist where i needed too much allowance was on my hips now after that i'm going to come up by one and a half inches at the back and then i'm going to slant it to match with the front of the trouser i hope you do understand this video um i'm going to try hard to explain so if you don't understand um let me know where confused you in the comment section but you might want to play back this video again so you could get what i just said after doing that i'm going to cut out the back of the trouser like so like i said you might want to play it back so you get to understand what this guy is even talking about right now if you got any value from this video you might want to subscribe to this channel then turn on the bell icon so you get to see when we upload videos like this one a minimum when you subscribe it tells us that we are building an audience and that we are creating helpful content for fashion designers out there so your subscription your like and your share of this video is going to go a long way for us you understand and then the next thing i'm going to do is to mark out the dots of the trouser the dart of the trouser and then to mark out the back pocket of the trouser but before that i want to cut out the front zipper fly like i am doing now the front zipper fly is mostly 10 inches long and two inches wide 10 inches long two inches wide with a little bit curved at the down so what i am doing simply doing is to use the excess that i that i had when cutting this trouser to cut the front zipper fly like i said the front zipper fly is 10 inches long and it is two inches wide i love um turning the front zipper fly with the lining when sewing the trouser i love turning it with the lining so after turning it i get to place it on the zip um base or the zipper fly now the next thing i'm going to do is to show you how to arrive at the pocket and um, the length for the front zipper fly and then i'm also going to show you how to arrive at the dart for the back so um for the front zipper fly the zip length is always two inches from the crotch the zip length is two inches from the crotch two inches so i just placed my tip from the crotch i came up by two inches and as you can see it is already um seven inches the remaining what is remaining for me is around seven inches and then for the back pocket or for the side pocket rather it is um two and a half inches from the crotch line it is two and a half inches from the crotch line so i'm going to mark my chalk at two and a half inches and then at the top i am going to come in by one and a half inch i marked my chalk at two and a half inches at the bottom and then i came in by one and a half inch at the top i hope you can see i hope you know that we are doing for the front and not for the back right now like i said i came up <coughs> by two of two and a half inches for the front i came up by two and a half inches for the pocket and i went in by one and a half inches right now the next thing i'm going to do is to create a notch at both the zipper fly and on the side pocket right i'm going to create a notch so that when folding it with an iron i get to make an aligning pocket or a pocket that stays same
so for the back pocket and for the back that what i'm going to do is to come down by three inches at the side of the back after coming down by three inches i'm going to go in by two inches at that three inches line from that two inch that i mark the next thing i'm going to do is to determine the size of my pocket now for a matured meal the size of the pocket is not more than six inches wide the width of the pocket is no more than six inches for this trouser i am going to be using five and a half but for a matured meal it should not be more than six and then for a teenager or for a young adult it should be let's say five and a half five and a half should be okay and this is because if you want the hand to be able to get in correctly now the next thing to do after determining the size of my pocket is to, to divide the pocket by two now the pocket is five and a half five and a half divided by two is two three quarter i'm going to mark my chalk at two three quarter and then i'm going to rule a straight line to the waist i hope you understand i'm going to rule a straight line to the waist from the waist my dart is not going to be more than three inches long like i did um at the beginning i went down by three inches and then determined my pocket so that center is where my dart is going to be sitting down on that point is where my dart is going to be sitting down on you can see the notch i already created i hope you got value from this video i hope you enjoyed watching i hope you got the information you are looking for from this video now if you did like i said subscribe to this channel turn on the bell icon and don't forget i am still in the business of um, selling the curved ruler and it's not just the curved ruler it is going to come in the seat so it is going to have every curve you need um as a fashion designer it, the advantage you have when you buy this cup is that it comes in a wooden form so it's very durable it will last longer than the plastic counterpart so hit me up with the link in the comment section or with the link in the description box of this video if you have any questions suggestions or comments do let me know in the comment section below you my name is kosi kosi one i'll see you next time until the next one bye bye